G'day listeners, this episode is proudly brought to you by our sponsors, supshq.com.au. Use BWB15 at checkout to receive 15% off and direct shipping. G'day guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Bros with Brains. This week we are joined by another special guest, and it's not Scaffy, he's back from Dubai, but it doesn't count. It is our good pal, Maxi. How are you, mate? I'm very good, mate. How are you? I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm starting to feel it. It's starting to, it's starting to creep in a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm not as bad as, yeah, it's taken, it's taken a sweet ass time, but you know, um, I'm not as bad as some other people probably are because, you know, we're smarter about it. But, you know, it's starting to, a few slip ups. I'm forgetting my watches. I'm leaving my earphones behind. I'm fucking just doing the dumb prep shit. So starting to notice a little bit of that. Hunger I was actually, I think I recorded yesterday and just some subjective data tracking that yesterday was like the first day I felt I thought about food. Like I was like, <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Like 20, well, what are we now? So in end of July, I started really recomping like April. So 12 weeks, nothing really crazy yet. And then I was like, oh, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice little, like a nice steak and chips would be good. That's well, kind of like- yeah, was it, was it, steak, it was a steak and chips that you wanted? Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, this yeah. wasn't anything like crazy. It's like, oh, you know. No, no, like, well, like in preps, <laughs> I always notice like straight after comps, like my first go-to meal is just like a hearty steak, good salad, like, like a, a massive, like a mega cut of hog's breath. And oh, yeah, just right. like, like beer cut chips, veggies, a bit of like, bar- like smoky barbecue, like hog's breath sauce and a steak and I'm fucking, I'm sorted. I then we like, got a sushi. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like, yet I'm still concerned that you deem hog's breath like a good steak. Well, I don't, I don't like, know. Uh, yeah, concerning. it is right. Like, I feel like there is better choices. Like, There's not much up here. What, what steak <laughs> choice is there up here? Outback <laughs> Steakhouse? Like maybe? Oh, fuck man, like <laughs> buy a steak and make it at home. It would be better than fucking Oh yeah, I'll go get that. Yeah, but like I don't want to, I've been cooking my own meals for like 20 weeks now. I'd rather just- Where, Where's Nationals? Right? Nationals? It's down here or is it up there again? No, nah, it's up here. Oh, so I say, fuck, if it was down here, I'll take you to an actual good steak after you. Well, yeah, me and Tom are planning on coming down just to get out and do Melbourne after the Yeah, place. yeah, we do it. Do because I'll t- then I'll show you a good steak. Yeah. No, you know what we're going to do? We're going to round up yeah. everyone in Melbourne who's been on the podcast and Tom, and we're going to go to All You Can Eat Japanese. <laughs> you fucking love Akami. <laughs> we took him to Akami once, Max, and that was it. He's off, mate. He's... Bro, I, I told Tom about this whole prep. I'm like, bro, go, we're go. You know what you do? Call up Akami and ask him for the rights and just open one up there. You'll make a killing. There's no fucking up here. I keep looking. There's nothing. Yeah, ask him. Just say, hey, how, like, how do I go about opening an Akami up here? <laughs> I'm presuming Scaff has seduced you at Okami, Max. I have no, been haven't to Akami, gone. but we haven't been together. So. Oh, we haven't gone. We haven't gone. Oh, we'll do a yeah. big feed. Yeah, I go way too regularly. It's just open invite. <laughs> I'm just gonna start, that's what I'll do. I'll just do an open invite on Instagram and be like, yeah. guys, right. yeah, going, going to Akami Friday night, 17. <laughs> table for 10, first in, first served. Yeah. <laughs> Every week recurring booking. Yeah. <laughs> just yes. let them know. It's booked in 6.30 Friday night. Turn yeah, up. It's just, just be there. We're just going to start hosting the podcast from there. <laughs> 100%. Lunchtime. Just until the guest vomits first. Lunchtime special. Love it. Anyway, that's me. Maxie, how are you, mate? How was how's things? How's business? How's gym? Uh yeah, good, good and good. Um yeah, everything is like pretty hectic at the moment, but in a good way. Um so yeah, I feel like you know I'm just playing catch up pretty much every single day, but that's better than having nothing to do, I suppose. So um that's fair. If you're listening to this and considering opening a gym. Don't um, <laughs> <laughs> take it from two people that own gyms. Don't. <laughs> no, it's my dreams. Probably not. <laughs> no, don't. I love it. Are, you, are you smashing the amino energies as well? Yeah. Um, no. So I've got well, pretty much same thing, but I've got Devastate Can. Yeah, nice. These are addictive. They are good. Hey, I, I reckon I went through like probably before I quit. I probably went through like a thousand bucks worth of nutrition warehouse just every day. I just take one. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, put it on a tab. Oh, we're not going to pay you that pay rise? Oh, that tab right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I'm out. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. I mean, that's not what I did. <laughs> yes. So, Max, you're not taking amino acids. Uh, amino acids. You're not taking aminos purely for, uh, you know, gains. Because, you know, uh, we, we, we know how 
good BCAAs are. I, look, to be honest, I have no idea <laughs> yeah. what is even in this. Um, it's, just, it's just crack cocaine. I'm yeah. literally like, is it, it tastes good. Yeah, um, it tastes good and it's got caffeine, win. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's carbonated water, it's caffeinated, and there's like something electrolyte in there. Cool, they're done. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it even says, look, plus electrolytes. Like, yeah, yeah, look, see? You yeah, are, good shit. you're living the health lifestyle. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> what you got to do is just put that in front of a pool and put your laptop next to it and then store it. Oh, yeah, that's where I'm going. And then on. hashtag influence a lot. Uh, the, the, weather, the weather down here is not allowing to be in front of a pool. Uh, Unless you want to be yeah. in, in an indoor pool, but I don't think that counts right. You have to be count? out <laughs> has to be outdoor with sun, right? 100 percent Yeah. But anyway. But, uh, yeah. So how's um how's all things like performance, recovery, many clients coming on board? Are you guys doing direct? So do you guys do one to one? Do you have open gym? Uh no, we do semi-private. So um it's been good. Like I feel like what are we now? We're like the end of July. Like we went, we tried really hard and like shit all was happening um, for a few months. And then like the last few weeks, it's like we haven't done anything differently, but it's just been going gangbusters. And I think it's, you know, people just getting used to the fact like, oh yeah, it's winter. It's probably going to stay winter for a little while, yeah. um, which is good. Um, but no, so we don't really do like big group stuff. So it's all, yeah, we do semi-private we do semi-private personal training so either way it's like you're either doing a semi-customized program where you know it's got some key patterns that will customize for you based on you know whatever your requirements are or you're going our semi-private personal training which is everything's built for you um, from scratch um, and it's just like one to five coach to client and the coach is just floating around making sure no one does anything stupid um <laughs> And I'm just there, like, just for banter and chats, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally the coaching lifestyle. You just yeah, talk, like, talk shit. Oh, do that a little bit better. Yeah. But also, make sure on the weekends, us. yeah, on the weekends, make sure you go get this. Because <laughs> some of our clients, right, so, like, we've had this guy um, for, like, I've had a client for, like, three years, right? So it's, like, if he's doing, like, RDLs and shit, like, there's really nothing I can say yeah. aside from, like, yeah maybe don't be a bitch and put more weight on there or like yeah, hey, right. it's week one of a four week block, maybe take some weight off. But yeah. like in terms of the general like execution of it, yeah, I don't say much. Yeah. Like, he's because he's, he's done an RDL every week or a variation of for yeah, three years. Yeah. So it's kind of like a hundred, he's done 150 weeks or 150 sessions worth of RDLs. It's like, Correct. he's probably going to know how to do an RDL. He's <laughs> left here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I run into the same problem, like opening the gym and, you know, people that have the same, that have been training or have trained. And, you, you you know, as a coach, you can identify it straight away. You're like, oh, yeah, you've done this before, clearly. It's kind of like, well, what am I going to say? Yes, go. One more rep. Push a little harder. You go, Good. girl. Yeah. Oh, high five. No high five. I don't <laughs> you go, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's like, fuck. And people are like, oh, you need to be coaching and queuing every session. It's like, you fucking Man, serious? You don't. Nah, less, less is more. <laughs> like... Come on, 100%. people. And then, like, what I've been like realizing with a lot of our clients, and you'd be the same. It's like sometimes it's not about getting them to do anything better; it's about getting them to keep on doing what they're already doing. Yeah. Um, and like that's the key to success, right? Yeah. So right. It's like, hey, you know all that shit that you did to get strong? Like, you don't just change anything drastically. It's yeah. like let's just find ways to keep you consistent. Let's find ways to motivate you. Like, dangle little carrots, set some things like that. Yeah. And like that's why we're really big on like the four week block of training because. Mm-hmm. It's like, cool, here's what you want to tick off in the next four weeks. Here's what you're shooting for. And then after four weeks, yeah, like we'll pick an exercise. Maybe it's like a rep PB goal or something like yeah. that. But you've always got that in the back of your mind. So it's of like, course. cool, next week I'll beat last week, stuff like yeah. that. Um, and yeah, with a newbie, it's like, here's how you do a deadlift. But with the more experienced guys, like it's yeah. very little about like, here's how to do it. Yeah. It's more like keep and that's it. That's what I find most people, like even, even from my clients, like I've got people who are very experienced right through people who are like brand new. All of them require the very same thing, which is eventually it's just going to be accountability and getting to repeat the same actions. Like yeah. once you get to a certain degree of training age, yeah, we can modify your programming and stuff. There's a few like, I call it sort of like your skill acquisition um, period. And that's like the first two weeks of a new block, which might be like a 12 to 16 week macro. You might get like two weeks, right? Like, oh, you're going to do the same shit now for 16 weeks. Those first two weeks, it's acceptable to be a little bit like, you know, how you go and feel it out, see what the movement's like, any tweaks you need to make, one or two cues, then we execute then they're just repeating the same thing. Like they know what they're doing. They know what the intensity is supposed to look like. We know where we're going. So really it's just like, you kind of get, you know, most people at that sort of training age, you really just, you just keep them doing the same thing. Like you keep them on, you keep on the tracks because of like, you know, 
where they've gone wrong in the past is they'll do two to four weeks of great work and then drop off or like sporadically three weeks, one week, two week, three weeks. And it's like, that's great. Now we just, you know, you're paying me to essentially keep you doing that for the next 20 weeks. And like, that's all where I find most of them are, are really paying you for. hundred percent. And it's the exact same thing with nutrition, right? It's like, sometimes <laughs> it's like, Hey, what, what should my, like, what should I do next week? It's the exact same thing that you did this week. Yeah. So, but again, like that's probably sometimes a harder sell. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's very much like, not what are you going to change? It's like, how can we keep you doing yeah. the things that you're already doing well for a long period yeah. of time? And like you said, there's sometimes where you've got to excite things up a little bit. Like once I get clients to a bit of a progressive state, I'll start encouraging some like free meals or free tracking meals. Or it's like, yeah. right, you've got your macros, you've got your meal strategy laid out. Okay, Sundays, I don't want you to stick any by the plan. I want you to go enjoy something off track and track it. So show me how you do it. Tell me where you might have like been better. Review what you had. How could you make better food choices? And that's like, you know, that little bit of carrot dangling that makes it a bit more exciting. But realistically, most of it is, okay, so we're on track. Your weight's dropping, your body fat's coming off, your strength's staying the same, and you're feeling pretty energetic. Okay, we don't change anything. Yeah, 100%. And even like with some of our clients, I've realized like something I've changed, I guess, in my approach as a coach is I'm much better now at like meeting them where they're at at that point in time. So previously I was like, putting, I guess, whatever my system was and just trying to fit them inside that. Yeah, yeah. Um, We've got a bunch of guys, like we call them like the Jack Dabs Club, right? They're just a whole bunch of dads. And like, they're all about like late 40s, early 50s. And then you saw them, like they do some pretty impressive shit um, in terms of their numbers and stuff. But in terms of like winter and stuff, like they just don't want to track food every day. Like they don't care. Yeah. So with that, it's like, I used to try and push it. But now it's like, yeah, cool. Can you just do this for me? It's like, I want you to have protein with every meal. I want you to have vegetables with two meals a day. I want you to have two serves of fruit a day and just don't do anything really stupid (laughs) with your food. And then let's just do that for the entirety of winter. And they're like, oh, sweet. And then their compliance is so much higher. And then, yeah, if it's like October and they're like, I want to get a a bit better shape. It's like, yeah, sweet. (laughs) They know how to do it. So it's like, yeah, Yeah. now we can actually introduce some stuff. But like, for them, if like, if it's not high enough on their priority list, it's like a pretty tough sell to kind of get them to do it. So now yeah, essentially, there's... essentially like you sell them, you set them up for failure, right? Like if you set yeah. those unobtain- unobtainable goals, like sure. Like, and it's one thing I've spoken because one of my clients just finished his PT course and he, like, he wants to get him coaching. I was like, one of the worst things you'll do is think that everyone you're going to have is going to be a highly conscientious type A personality. <laughs> yeah. That's going to just nail everything. I'm yeah. like, it's great in theory yeah. I'm market to these guys. We all want that client. Yeah. However, real coaching <laughs> is getting the ones who are where they are. You meet them and progress them to that at yeah. best if they if they want to. And then sort of finding that sweet ground in between where it's like, how can we give you the lifestyle you want and get the results you want and kind of like blend the two. Mm-hmm. And I find that's where like, you know, most of us get, but we like, when you start out, you're like, oh, wouldn't it be sick just have nothing but elite athletes? Yeah, it'd be great on yeah. paper. It'd be fucking awesome. Mate, even, work, even working with elite athletes, as Max will probably tell you, like they're just this sh- shit. Yeah, <laughs> they're horrible with the nutrition, man. They got no clue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was talking to um, uh, Jason Galea and Ben, we were doing on their podcast and he was asking like about that because he's like, I've heard like what the nutrition advice they get. It's like, and I was like, yeah, it's like, it's not a priority for them. So A, you go meet them where they're at. But also I was like, man, like they're not going to track their food. Like the main priority with people, like depending on what they do, obviously that's very important. The main priority is like, are they eating enough to sustain what they're currently doing? Yeah, exactly. That's all you really care about. And yeah. are they not too fat? Like yeah. those are really yeah. your two bandwidths. It's yeah. not like yeah. they're not in prep. So they don't need to weigh their food. Yeah. Um, and they're not, I don't want to say it's not smart enough because some of them really are, but it's like, they're not disciplined enough to do it. So yeah. one yeah. they simply yeah. found like genetics mixed with what they're good at mixed with like the, the desire to win. So I was like, well, just tell me how to win. Okay. Yeah. Eat better food. Okay, cool. I need more food. Yeah. yeah. And that's pretty much how I even got exposed to nutrition initially because I was the strength and conditioning coach, right? They had a full-time dietitian, but they wouldn't listen to her. Like yeah, they'd yeah. never go ask her anything. Yeah, so yeah. just be like in the gym with me, like, yeah, what do you reckon? Like I'm trying these <laughs> amino acids and shit. I'd be like, nah, like it's, it's shit. And then you get so many questions. You're like, I should probably actually know <laughs> <Yeah>. something. <laughs> I should learn some of this. Yeah. It's like instead of outsourcing, <laughs> he's just decided to go get qualified. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, I think that's like, you know, like my personality. It's like, oh, let's go fully down this rabbit hole. Tell yeah. you what I'll do. I'll go do a master's degree. I'm like, what an idiot. <laughs> 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 it's a sentiment I do share. It's yeah. funny because actually we're at, at the gym now, we've got a uni student doing his placement hours. He's doing exercise science. And I'm like, oh, what are you considering? Because he's in his final year. He's like, oh, what are you, what are you thinking of doing post, post-grad? post Are you doing anything? He's like, yeah, I want to do a master's in exercise physiology. I'm like, 
don't. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm, don't. Yeah. He's like, oh, what? Why? I'm, I, I sat him down for 20 minutes and explained why not to do a physio. Mm. I'm like, I can give you four or five people who will tell you the same thing. Mm. <laughs> like, 100%. Is also, that, I, someone told me recently, um, one of the guys looking at it's about $90,000 now to do that. Oh, month. my God. So, like, you've got to think about that. Like, yeah. 90 grand is an expensive yeah. piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, find that, I find that always an interesting conversation, especially, like, the millennial age now, like, in that, that just getting to, like, 18, 20. Like, oh, I don't have to pay for uni. It's like, no, 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 no. You're misgrasping how hex works. Yeah. You, you make well, it considering, away with it. And considering oh. inflation rates just went up, so your hex has yeah. just gone up. <laughs> yeah. You, you might get away with, like, oh, up front until they earn X amount. But the second you get a job out of uni and all of a sudden yeah, you're, like, demanding that high pay rate because you're qualified. Yeah. That comes straight out of that. Oh, yeah, okay. And, and X Fizz is not going to get you that much of a pay rate. Like, let's yeah. be real. No. As I was, I was asking him, he's like, oh, like, why? And I'm like, well, put it this way. I've got one and I know about three other people. We all own gyms and run online businesses. <laughs> I'm like, we didn't probably need a master's degree to do that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, see, I don't think he got the concept, but that's fine. No, I mean, sometimes you've got to find that out for yourself. Don't yeah, maybe, right. He wants to work in rehab because he, he wants to work in rehab. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Fair enough. But yeah, if you want to, if you want to do that, like, I found for me being you know a really small room in a clinic for yeah. like ten hours a day. Yeah, exactly. I was yeah. going batshit insane. So it's just you got to. My advice to anybody now is like not do it or don't do it. But it's like yeah, you're doing placement in an area, but you're talking about doing a qualification in a very different area. Different area. Yeah, hundred percent. Go volunteer. Do you it's, know twenty plus hours a week in that environment, and then tell me you want to do it. It's That's literally literally what I said to him because he's like, I want to do rehab, and I'm like, well, why are you here? Like, yeah, yeah. We, and it was a gen, like I wasn't being a smart ass. I'm kind of like, well, if you want to do rehab and you want to work in a rehab setting, this isn't rehab. Like, why? Like, yeah, you can correct fundamentals, you know, at the start, like right at the base of someone coming in. So it's like you can, you know, teach correct movement patterns, which is yeah, a great way to not get injured, right? Like, it's yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah, it's kind of, it's a good way to go about it. But if you want to work in rehabilitation, then you need yeah. to work with broken people. Yeah, I don't want to break my people, so <laughs> this is probably not probably not the place to be. <laughs> anyway, it was an interesting uh, conversation, that's for sure. Yeah. When, when took took us back, I was just like, "Oh fuck that! Don't do that again." Don't do that. <laughs> it's learn like tra- we'll that, that, that trauma coming back. I was just like, "Oh, don't do that again." <laughs> nah, it's good. Mum's happy that I've got it, so that's good. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, Mum's got the piece of paper somewhere. She's proud of me. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. you know how many people are like, oh, like where is it? I'm like, I couldn't tell you, and it costs a couple hundred bucks to get a replacement. I'm like, I'm not paying it. So fine. Uh, yeah. uh, but it's there somewhere. It's in theory. Yeah, it's in yeah. one of the boxes somewhere. How, how many people are just gonna end up like realistically like, in the future? All you're gonna do is digitally scan it and save it. It's not gonna be worth like. So you you might print it out, put it on the wall, but like realistically in the future, you're just gonna scan it and know that it's there somewhere. And I prefer my Joker picture on the wall than that. Yeah. Yeah, way better. Like, those guys work better for me than, than yeah. like, any qualifications on there. Yeah. And, yeah, and you, walk into, like, you walk into, like, a Cairo's office, and they've got, like, 55 certificates, and they're all over the wall. Yeah. And it just seems to be Cairo's. It's nothing else. It's no one else. Maybe the odd physio here and there will have, like, know, a couple of... Personal training is pretty bad, to be fair. Oh, I haven't stepped in a personal training office for a long time, yeah. so that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. I know, I do know some PTs have like the certificate, like online coaches. They have them in the background when you like, and, and you know oh, yeah. they'll they'll post a clip of like their online check in with a client. And you just see all the certificates. It's like, bruh, you got to cert for relax. Like, yeah, chill. Yeah. It's okay. They like, give you three I'm, just for completing. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm glad you did the extras. Like, it's awesome. Mm. But like, come on, man. Like, like people that print out people that print out like their um like cert one and a half in kettlebell swinging alteration. <laughs> it was like. Come oh, man, no one like some of this shit. Like you go to like a gym and stuff. It's like our world. Yeah, like, and they've got the qualifications. And they've got like CPRs and their qualifications. Like, bro, that's like you need to have that just to have insurance. That's not a qualification. Yeah, hundred percent. And also, if someone has a heart attack, definitely call an ambulance. Don't yeah, yeah. Don't, don't you do it. Any, I, we could all tell you, having sat through CPR sessions, no one listens to a fucking thing. It goes for eight hours. Just like, don't trust me with this. Yeah, 100%. I just always rely on the fact, like with I always said, Carl. Like at any point in time, there is. At least like five nurses and possibly yeah doctor, yeah yeah like, with your clientele yeah so it's like, <laughs> that's literally yeah, yeah. So it's like, <laughs> and we now have like a defib as well so it's like okay we don't need to do shit but yeah we're yeah, good don't ask but... us to do it. <laughs> yeah is anybody a doctor we've like, done the paperwork, paperwork. Just don't like, trust the paperwork yeah hundred percent man I feel that because it's the same where I am kind of like we've got you know the the big ass first aid kit we've got a defib in there and stuff and it's just like. Don't get me wrong. I'm. I, I've actually had training, and I've actually had to do yeah, it before. Put on his nipples. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then it's like it's like I'm versed in it and pretty like comfortable and confident. If it had ever arised, yeah. but the first thing I'd be like, okay, like I know you're a, you're a doctor. You're an emergency doctor. 
go do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, you're you know what's up. Funny? Yeah. You know what's funny though? There's actually a social psychological phenomenon that happens in this situation where we know the bigger the group of spectators are witnessing the accident, the less likely people are to partake because yeah, they're yeah. in the palming off as the next person. Yeah, 100%. So like, you get 10 nurses in a room and like they're all good for it, but they'll be like, oh, that other nurse will get it. I'll take yeah, off. yeah, exactly. Like, oh, someone else, will do it. Dead. Someone, else will do it. <laughs> someone else will do it. Someone else will do it. Yes. <laughs> the person's on the floor dead. You're like, oh, good, good chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you fucking assholes. <sighs> Well, anyway, um, uh, I mean, I guess I guess there's a good chance to to rant a little bit. You got a few things on the on the mirror. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. Mirror, Set mirror, on the wall. <laughs> I just right. started shit on Instagram. It's always fun. I love it. Um, no, so all right, okay, hear me out. <laughs> okay, all right. okay, here we go. All right. crack, crack. <laughs> okay, busy gym, like massive facility, busy gym, limited equipment. Like some, fortunately, like you know, in big gyms, they want to buy everything instead of like doubles of the stuff that's good. That's well, Jim Stafford. Okay, so where they're training now, me and my training partner are training legs. One of my clients is there training legs, like online clients, so not coaching. Another client's there, and then someone's between doing their shit or whatever they were. Now, well, Jim has three glute machines, two of which are direct hip thrust related machines, right? Fucking two of them. Not taken because you walked past it. One of my clients, very polite young man, because it was me and I was in prep, I'd have been fucking pissed. Middle of like a peak hour session. So it was a Saturday at like, it would have been 8.30 by the time we were actually cranked into the session and we had up to what we're doing. So about 8.30. So peak time on a Saturday. Someone is doing hip thrusts on a lane hamstring machine as my client is standing there waiting to use the lane hamstring machine. Doesn't take the cue that people are waiting for this or that there's like two or three hip thrust machine available. And then he pulls up his phone and shows me. And it's like, it's like one of those like TikTok trends where they're like, yeah, do this to get a better fucking because of the yeah. mechanical plan. No, 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 no. Fuck yeah. off and use the hip thrust machine. There's two of them there. Yeah, There's the a Smith in- machine you can set up <laughs> if you want to do hip thrust. Leave the hamstring machine for the yeah. people who need to use hamstrings. The intention of using that particular machine for that particular exercise is only if it you can't facilitate the true movement. That's right. Which- like, if in you, the worst if case, you've got, not yeah, available. Yeah, if you've got more than enough stations to do the movement, go also, do the like fucking three, movement. Ha- three, three, uh, three Smith machines and like this gym has like eight squat racks. So like- even yeah, if More you, than like, enough room, yeah. More than enough room to just simply do that movement on a proper machine or like system to set up, not take up in prime time a machine that people are waiting to use when there's one of them. Yeah, that's special. Like it was- like I didn't realize at the time until like he like he was very polite about it, but like we were mid session, and at this point I'm pretty I'm almost certain she can hear me. I'm like that's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen, and I didn't even realize that he was waiting at this point. And I'm like I'm just tired and hungry. I was like this is fucking stupid. And I'm, I'm watching this partake, and I'm like why? And then I realized he's like sat down straight after. I was like why don't you just grab me? I would have told her to fuck off. Yeah. Like I'll do. I don't I don't ever take someone's machine off them. Like everyone has a right to a machine if you're using it. But if you're doing that in the middle of a peak hour gym when that machine exists somewhere else and someone else has to wait for you, I'm just telling them to fuck off. Like that's just, it's yeah. impolite and immature. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I'd be interested to know if the coach or whoever gave the program gave them that specific variation. <laughs> it's like, you have a glute bridge, but I need you to do it on a hamstring curl. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the plane of resistance is just so much more mechanically advantaged on the fucking lane hamstring curl. Oh, shut up. No, it's yeah. not. That's yeah, that's special. It's yeah, I got, yeah, I got it's nothing. Bizarre. Yeah, I got nothing. Like I agree with you. It's just hey, if you've got more than enough space and pieces of equipment to do it, then go do it properly. Don't. By all do means, it if it was like a go. fucking like absolute packed house, madhouse gym, and like that was the only available way to get that, and that was the last exercise you had to do. Fair enough. I'm all for compensating and facilitating. You know, bear grills, adapt, overcome, improvise. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you have the choice between between clean water. And filtering your own piss water, and you choose to filter your piss water, that's on you. And you yeah. need to just. I, like it. I said, I do, I do wonder if it was programmed. Like, if the, because, you know, like a lot of us are just robots, right? And don't get yeah. me wrong, I think, I guess us as coaches and stuff, we'd have a little bit more, uh, we'd have more common of sense. the ability to sort of be like, eh, we have some common sense. Like, we can see shit's going on, blah, blah, blah. So you'd be like, maybe we'll just go do this instead. Yeah. However, we do have those people, those clients that are just, robots they'll just be like hey yeah i'm just going to do it because it's exactly what it says on my program like to the letter which you know credit to them that they follow their program but i wonder if she had it programmed (laughs) and and she's just following her program and if that's the case hey like maybe you know exercise a little common sense here and there but at the same time i wouldn't blame 
Oh, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. If, if that was the case, <laughs> I'd be more having the concern with the coach to prescribe that. And I'd be yeah. like, I, I try to be like, okay, why would this be happening? Like, yeah, of, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Getting, that's, that's what I instead think. Instead of getting frustrated by things now, I try to just be like, okay, what is this person's justification? Yeah. And I couldn't rationalize other than maybe it was told to be done. But like, even still, you're watching people wait for you. And it just gets to a point where like, for me, had I seen that my, like, my guy was waiting for that, I'd have just been like, like, what the fuck are you doing? Really? Like what it's, there's, it's nine o'clock here tops. And it's like busy as fuck. It's a madhouse at the moment. It's packed, but those machines are free. Yeah. Go use them. hundred percent. I would go. thousand dollars of machinery. Go use it. Yeah. I agree with that. And some people just don't know. Right. <laughs> they just. I mean, she looked like a trained individual. So it was like, to me, I'm like, you carry like you got all the gear. You're wearing the whole fucking like you know fit spo kit, and you know I'm sure there's next fifty sponsorship somewhere there. Like well, fucking like I said, maybe, maybe maybe it was just that literally maybe that was programmed then. Oh, like, that know. may have been the like the actual exercise program it was a hamstring curl glute bridge, <laughs> a laying hamstring curl glute bridge. You, it's a you... weird way to set up the exercise in general, though. Well, yeah, I, look, I yeah, I'm not even. We gonna, don't get into that, but I'm no, like, I'm, I'm not even going to get into the mechanics of a glute bridge. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, no, fucking, no, like, it's a dumb fucking exercise. We won't even get into that. Well, it's probably slightly better than when people do it on the leg extension, right? That one I don't understand. I'm like, you're literally exactly. starting in like a squat, and then <laughs> doing, so, yeah, yeah. Do, doing them on any of those machines is stupid. First yeah. and foremost, it's like especially like, if there's someone you know when they invented a, a hip thrust machine. They probably planned for people to do hip thrust on it, right? Um, well, who would have thought that it was? I don't know what title. you guys on the hip thrust machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just on donkey kickbacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you're like, yeah, it, it's in the name of the machine. Like, it's yeah. yeah, it's just one of those like, you know, you can't fuck this up, but someone did. <laughs> someone, someone decided. <laughs> but like, even like. Surely, like, I don't know about you guys, but like sometimes because I'm in prep, I'm like, when I'm like, at this point now, I've made sure I've got an exercise selection list. Like, obviously, we don't need to have it, but like, I like to have a list. Okay, this muscle group, these work here, look for a like, yeah, catalog. Like, yeah, there's a catalog of like to turn to, like, if I'm tired and it's not thinking straight, mm-hmm. like, oh, that's right, I want to like put in this variation, work in this range of motion. But like, you have to, like, you surely, before you land on that one being your program exercise, you've gone through the list going, no, not feeling that one, not feeling that one, not feeling that. That makes sense. Let's do that one. At a gym where there's like 20 spare squat racks, three Smith machines and two hip thrust machines, lane hamstring curl hip thrusts. Like you've had to land on that and go, that makes sense. In this program, is order selection. That makes sense. Well, that's, yeah. Like I said, I, I am more and more confident that the coach has programmed that exercise. Now, whether she's her own coach or not is another story. But <laughs> <laughs> again, we can go deeper down this rabbit hole. But <laughs> nah, just, she's probably just seen it like Ben said at the start. Probably just seen it on like TikTok, TikTok. or something. And been That's like, what we think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen it for you. It's been around for ages. It's been around yeah. for like a couple of years now. Oh, yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know when like, some, like a trend just rises on like yeah. one of those platforms, it's like, yeah, try this band to do this with your hands and retract this, but don't actually do anything. You're like, yeah, cool. No. No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no. Uh, that ain't, that ain't it. What led to my reel the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah I figured that's why <laughs> you were crack, cracking the shit. Yeah, fucking yeah. So that yeah. was, uh, I don't know. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, I don't know. It was just like one of those things where it's in the moment. You're like, but why? Like, yeah, I want to try no, and justify this for you, so I don't feel mad at you. But also, like, there's people waiting for this machine. It's a busy day. There's three other variations you can go do that are actually designed for that programming. Why? Just, just why? I like, com- look. I completely agree. Like, the more, I, the more I'm yeah. tired and hungry, I get like the less my filtration exists. So I'm just like, I think at some point I may have said it louder than I thought I did as well. Like, I literally said, "What the fuck is that?" But like, I thought I was looking at Tom, but I also think I may have said it a little bit loud as well. <laughs> I was like, eh, "It's I stand by it." I'd just be interested to see if she does it again. Yeah, I'm just gonna hang around on weekends and just wait for a rock up and just see. <laughs> yeah, like, I know this seems weird. But yeah. this isn't a creepy thing. I'm actually making fun of you in a different yeah. way. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Can you please put me in touch with your coach? Yeah. I am my own coach. Ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. What, 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 you're letting tension go like a quarter, it even comes down. If you even get it, you're like, okay, so I'm working the top range of the hip thrust. It's the cast well, hip thrust. Oh yeah, let's not get into that again. <laughs> we would actually be here all day breaking down how shit hip thrust is, but let's not do that. Um, should we do some questions? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. 
Uh, Josh and his, she's a 10, but <laughs> fucking really, bro. She's a 10, but has the same hair as Andrew Locke. <laughs> I don't know have, where you, Rock is. Have you the physio, Melbourne based physio? Where's it? Um, the Mo- Mohawk thing. Yeah, but does he now have like a, like it's gone all the way out as like a rat tail or something? Or is that uh, just when his mohawk's not up, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't I know, know he has the mohawk. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just 10, but has the same hair. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But yeah, we won't get into those. That's boring. Implication. Oh, of, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Implication of stress mental health plays on someone with training and advice to overcome. So, okay. Mental health and stress and. I guess how it plays out on someone's training and how to overcome it. Um, I feel like that's a Ben question. I wrote a book on that if you want to go read it. <laughs> I mean, we could do that too. But yeah, yes. I mean, go look for my stress book on my website. Um, that is a good read on how stress affects life. Um, but yes, okay. So really, let's try and <laughs> narrow this down we'll, really we'll, quickly. We'll be here for an hour. Yeah, now. we'll be here for a while. Stress plays a massive role in training and it will play a massive role in reducing training capacity. It will reduce a role, it will reduce a role in recovery. It will reduce uh, your ability to utilize substrates of uh, different macronutrients. It will affect your ability to sleep. It will affect your ability to focus. It will affect, it will actually affect your ability to uh, receive, uh, sorry, retain memory. Um, it will then affect poorly in your sleep because of increased epinephrine and cortisol, which will then lead to a reduction in the utilization of food and hormones recovery fucking training capacity and further memory consolidation basically get stress under control um how to do so so basically what you're talking about there the way the stress is affecting your training capacity is the sympathetic side of the dial is turning too hard and you're too wound up and too aroused and too worked up so we need to find ways to schedule in things like downtime and addressing this is the problem so one of the things that i find in the industry that frustrates me is like people frustrates me is the wrong word People will, will band-aid with, oh, parasympathetic, go for a walk on the beach. Like, great stuff, true, but you're not addressing the actual causality of the stress. Is it a training stress? Is it a work stress? Or is it like something actually stressful that you're ignoring, like a uh, you know a projection of some sort of in- internal insecurity, anxiety, is relationship problem, someone dying? Like, if you're not dealing with that stress, but you're simply band-aiding it, it's not going to fix it. Fix, focus and identify what the stressor is and the stressors because yes, allostasis is a great system and adapting to that stress is cool. But if we can address the stress so that your body isn't going through it, we can get better utilization of everything. I'm a walking example of that through this prep. So parasympathetic side, go to the movies, have sex, smoke a joint, watch TV, go for a walk on the beach, fucking, I don't know, whatever you do to relax, but address the causality of the stressor. Is that much it, are those tips in your book? Yes, actually they are. <laughs> okay. Get high, get high and get laid. I like it. Yes, 100%. Simple. Five pounds of water weight come off if you do both those things. <laughs> um, I mean, we've got PED questions here, but I'm not going to lie. I really can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we women's PEDs during prep to keep muscle. It's like... Oh, Anabar, right? Yeah, yeah. Just trend. Fuck it. Send it. <laughs> Grow an Adam's apple. See what happens. Just fucking send it. Nah, I mean, it depends... The one problem I have with most coaches now that are doing more so bikini, more so than like wellness and stuff, bikini, you do not necessarily need PEDs. Like this is a big thing that a lot of people don't understand and will not grasp. Again, depending on the federation, we know IFBB is pretty yeah. strict and you have to be pretty fucking shredded. Like I understand that, but you don't need PEDs to be that shredded, i.e. we have natural bodybuilding and they're very evident in showing that you can get very, very lean without having to use PEDs. You're just going to have to suffer a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, happens. But you do not need <laughs> ANOVA or any sort of uh, androgen-based PED to compete in bikini. Like stop you. There are many, many other forms of enhancements you can use that are much, much safer. Again, not, they're not deemed hundred percent safe. Anything that you start to do with this is still going to, you know, have its potential side effects and its potential issues. You're just trying to limit that as much as possible. There are many other things that you can take um, and you can do, especially using Psalms in females is a really nice way to do that. You will, be able to increase muscle mass if you're outside of an energy deficit. If you're inside of an energy deficit, you should, in theory, be able to keep the muscle that you've accrued, or majority of the muscle that you've accrued, the um, 
contractile protein. If it's non-contractile protein, like everyone, that's just going to leave because it's non-contractile protein. We don't need it. Um, but yes, stop taking Anavar as a bikini athlete. <laughs> Fuck, man. Stop taking, stop taking Anavar, T3, T4, Climbuterol, like all this shit that I come across. I'm just like, bruh, you're wondering why you're in hospital after three weeks. Like, yeah, no shit. Fucking idiot. Anyway. Uh, coaching, right? Yeah. Now, would you rather uh-huh. be prime Arnold back in the day or prime Arnold now with how training has changed and information around training has changed. So basically if you had Arnold's genetics, would you want to be back then and train the way he did back then? Or would you want to train the way you do now with his genetics? Well, mm, there's a lot of facets to this question. Is bodybuilding as popular now because Arnold doesn't exist? If I'm Arnold now, it means I didn't Yeah, but I, I don't think that's part of the question. I think the question yeah. is like, literally, let's just say you had Arnold's genetics. You oh, yeah. were Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Would you want to be training back then when he did? Or would you rather train now with currently what we have in terms of information? Back then, 100%. Back then? Yeah, yeah. I, feel like, I feel like back then, like... It was a much more simple time. Simpler yeah. time. It was like, yeah. yeah, we just fucking did chest and back on the same day <laughs> for a decade. And that's just yeah. what we did, you know? It yeah. yeah. It's funny because I, I think about that. I was thinking a sort of similar line, like, you didn't overcomplicate it back then, yeah. but at the same time now, it's like I still train that way now. So I don't know if my training would be very different. Yeah, it's just like I've just been accustomed to different training variations, but I still train. Yeah, yeah it's like I still train. You know, close to failure, I still train the way I train, and I I feel I would have done that back then. But would I have known it back then is the question, or would I have done literally what everyone did back then, whatever that was, like you know, chest day, back day, leg day, like. Now that we have all these different variations and it's only through yeah. time and knowledge that we've been able to do that. So I think I'd have his genetics and train now, knowing how I like to train. I like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? And if you look at it from the sense of like, of the potential to, uh, I guess, monetize and explode with it, know that like now is be a better time, but at the same time, like he did that without even having social media. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, like I said, I think it's just literally having his genetics and how would you want to train? Like, would you want to train back yeah. then or train now with the new informational information that we've gathered over the years? The genetics think, mixed with modern training capacity mixed with machinery mixed with drugs. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I think you're gonna, yeah, yeah. I think you have a better recipe if you had his genetics and the knowledge of that's today bullshit and, back and the then. equipment. And just today. kind of like, uh, the one thing I do envy is the, the bro gyms they had, like, you know, Gold's Temple, the yeah. land, like where they could go. It was just like, 20 hardcore fuck off dudes training together, getting sweaty and like sounds mm-hmm. like a porno. Um, but like, like Saturday night. It sounds like it's just a good weekend. Um, mm-hmm. But like that, that environment, like it doesn't really, mm-hmm. I know, like we do that sort of at world and it kind of get looked at weird. Like me and Tom, were like, like there's a story I have today of like Max and Rec, uh, PB in, in prep on my hack. And like, I get loud. It's just like, fuck it. There's not much weight. I'm this hang- I'm hungry. Like I can't control it. I'll be quiet. Yeah. But it kind of feels like, even though it's a world gym, it feels like I have to be kind of like tame. Yeah. And like, you don't, we don't really have any of those environments in Australia where you can just go like balls to the walls, grunt and cuss and swear and fucking just rip it apart. Yeah. So that, that environment they had back then is probably the only thing I really envy. Mm. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And maybe like, you know, back then you didn't have such ease of access to information. So the only way you had to really deem what was effective or not was like, other people's results and like what i mean best case it's like a magazine comes out every three months with like yeah. hey try this it's not like you jump on social media and there's like 400 different ways to do every exercise well yeah, yeah you're, not, you're, like, not doing, you're not doing glute bridges on that <laughs> 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 100%, it's like you know there was a time when you did leg curls and leg curl machine yeah it's just, who yeah. Like, yeah yeah you didn't bicep curl in the squat rack like little basic shit 100 percent. so that would be good yeah that's what i was saying I, like the times would be way better like but I do think having the knowledge of the, the potential now, now is greater, but the time and, back then will fun. And maximizing potential, would I think yeah. would be obviously better, be better now, but you know. Fuck, Mary kill. Kamala Harris. <laughs> Fuck, it's going to get bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, gets, <laughs> it, gets, it gets worse. Hillary Clinton. Oh, yes. Julia Gillard. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, Look, well, I feel like Julia tried. <laughs> yeah, um, she I, feel, I feel like she tried. I'm she hasn't killed as many people, so I kind of think like she's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm probably gonna kill Clinton. Uh, like she has to go, right? Because at this yeah. point, like the list is getting too big. Someone's gonna do her. 
Yeah, yeah. So she's got to go, and I'll, I'll flip a coin on the other two. Yeah, I think at least I, I think Maxwell might not hang herself this time if Clinton's not around. Yeah, look, yeah, I think killing Clinton. I think we're all in agreement. Have you seen that? Have you seen that meme where it's like uh, Julian Maxwell when is it Julian? Yeah, Julian Maxwell when um, she notices that uh, it's like Julian Maxwell's face when the light on the camera turns off. Oh uh, yeah, like, she I've seen it. Yeah, commit suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> you just know it's coming. Yeah, I think I'm gonna marry Julio. And I'm just gonna get into Kamala, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's just just, just gonna have what's gonna happen. Yeah, come out, come out. Mark my words, old mate Biden is like because Kamala, Kamala is Kamala Harris vice president. That's her, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like two days away from being like medically retired. He's properly inept. And I she, don't know. That's, that's what people said in like 1998, man. He's yeah. Still gone. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like at a certain point when he's literally having to hold a, a pamphlet that says "Sit here, say this," it's like. Yeah. You're a walking mockery of a, of, a, of a human. They're clearly staging for her to come in and be like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be her yeah. purely out of him just being incompetent in that. So, oh, yeah. Um, or he just has a heart attack. Can't yeah. Or that. yeah. Like, li- literally, like, I think that's probably going yeah. to be the, the, the likely case. Call the old, like, oh, I dropped a pill in your drink. It's a yeah. heart attack. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty crap. Like, because I saw this meme and it was like, you know, in what industry would you hire people like of this age? And then you go, like, how are they running? Like, all yeah. of these countries around the world. Like if someone was like 80 years old and applied for a job, you'd be like, nah, sorry, champ. Your best years no, are behind you. But we're like, we appreciate oh, your but service, but your best years behind you. You could definitely be in charge of this nuclear arsenal though. Like, whatever. <laughs> you can't say the alphabet without stuttering. Yeah, probably not going to give you bombs. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, no, I completely agree. He's a fucking moron. Like he's yeah, I think, a very, I think that very reason, special I'm person. Gonna marry, I'm going to marry Camilla. Mm. Oh, She's interesting. places. First yeah. male, pre- first male, uh, what was it first, first Came husband? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 the first husband. First, the first, you'd be the, the first, first, the first, the first, you'd be the first, first, first man. Yeah. <laughs> first, first man. Yeah. Yep. Does, does oh. that technically make you a virgin? Yes. 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 yes right. <laughs> Would you rather have basketballs for eyes or shoe boxes for hands? For oh, fuck's sake. Yeah. Oh, I reckon, gosh. I reckon basketballs for eyes. Yeah, like your head would be so big, you wouldn't even put a doorway. You'd be mad famous on either or, but I mean, I just feel like yeah, those, true. you know, those cartoon memes, like you are physically a cartoon, like you yeah. are the embodiment. You would make some money. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And then, like, yeah. Shoe box for hands, like, it'd be really tricky to go to the gym. Mm. Really hard to wank. Yeah. Hundred percent. Really hard. But at least, if, at least if I can't see, I can still wank. But if I can't, but wank, it doesn't say that you can't see. It just says you got oh, basketballs for eyes. Yeah, that's fair. Though. Say really well. Yeah, exactly. You'd have optimal vision. <laughs> like your 2020 is each eye now. Like it's not in total. It's fucking, you yeah. have 50 50 vision. Yeah, like one of those lizards, like the eye just rotates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you have x ray vision yeah. purely of how yeah. big your eyes are. That's fair. I could yeah. do a 380 view. Yeah, 100%. View. I'm, I'm taking the eyes, just saying. Yeah. Max, what do you got? Yeah, I'll probably take the basketball spies. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, I'm taking the basketball. Yeah, fair. If <laughs> dosage wasn't an issue, name the drug you would take knowing you couldn't die. Trend. <laughs> you know what? I think everyone would say trend, to be honest. <laughs> it's uh, like we keep bad- trend. Probably heaps of cocaine and heaps of trend. Yeah, well, it's not limited to PEDs, right? <laughs> it's just like whatever drug you want. Yeah, yeah. Dose, if dose was an issue and you got the same benefit without the health risks, cocaine for sure. 100%. You could do everything forever and just be fine. Yeah, it's like it's just one big day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> January 1st, there's one sleep for Christmas. Oh, yeah, li- literally. Or like, if, meth, just as a- if meth didn't like ruin your entire life and it had no like negative side effects, you just take heaps of meth, just never sleep, be absolutely fine and just dominate. Yeah, right. It's like, yeah. you know, like sleep when your enemies in the fucking work when you're sleeping. <laughs> and I work every day. All yeah, day. 24 fucking I seven, brother. <laughs> I yeah, I'd probably still gonna go with something like trend. So <laughs> yeah. Still trend. yeah. Yeah, just get fucking huge. Um what else have we got here? We PED, PEDs and women's athletes again came up twice. Someone's asking to go further in depth on growth hormone and how it functions and the application it has. Easiest way, jump on like Spotify or was it Apple? IPod, no, Apple Podcast, whatever it is. I, don't, I don't, obviously do not have an Apple phone. Um, and type in HGH or GH. 
Joe Jeffrey and just listen to anything he's been on because he's probably the most averse person I've come across. When it comes to growth hormone, I would definitely do it some injustices. Um, we do have more questions. Is there such thing as good fats and bad fats? No. Nah. I mean, yes and no. Yeah, it depends how you want to attack that. Like, kind of, sort of, but not really. Yeah. It's like trans, saying, trans fats aren't great. Let's put it, yeah, that, yeah, put yeah. that out there. But. We have more desirable fats than we do yeah. undesirable fats. <laughs> yeah, it's more about, about like context. ratios, right? It's like yeah. there's nothing good or bad, but there's um, amounts of each that you should be aiming for. Devil's in the dose. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly right. And it's if like, already... if you're going to break it down, like polymonosaturated and trans, do you want to make the majority of your fat intake from trans fats? Probably not. What are trans fats? We look at the, well, how to simplify trans fats is basically just like, you're not having a highly processed fats intake, whether they're going to come from like things like takeaways, chocolates, cakes, pastries, like that variation of fat intake, probably not great. If you have things like different varieties of seeds and nuts and you're having varieties of different uh, vegetable oils, you're having different varieties of uh, meat fats like salmon, you're going to get a list of things like fatty acids that we actually want to consume and that are good uh, versions of dietary fats, right? But it's not going to be like, I hate the expression when people apply and it's what we don't know. We don't know. I get that. But like if people apply a moral agenda to food, like fucking this, this fat's bad for you and it's good and bad. And it's like, it doesn't have an agenda. It's not trying to kill you. It's not, there's not, it's not an assassin out to hunt you down. Just mm. it's some of it can be healthier. Some of it can be less healthier. Yeah, correct. And I mean, in terms of people listening, like trans fats is basically like a man-made fat. So it's yeah. when you're adding hydrogens to vegetable oil, I think is how it's yes. made. Um, and it turns basically what should be a liquid um, yeah. into a solid at room temperature, which is not naturally how fats are. Yeah. So basically that heavily processed shit bet. But yeah, aside from that, I mean, there's nothing inherently bad about saturated or no, nah, from yeah, from like a digestive standpoint, if you're a healthy individual, blah blah blah, it's fine. It's just balance. But if you are an unhealthy individual, then you obviously have to look at it. Correct. Obviously, Correct. the thing that trumps that is going to be your total intake of calories. Well, yeah, total intake of yeah calories and fat. To be honest. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. Then, just don't be silly. Yeah, don't be a fucking yeah. idiot. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, the simplest, simplest expression when I give people free meals is just don't eat like an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. Need that like you're a grown adult, you can choose what goes in your mouth. Yes, the whole like, uh, I'm fucking predisposed to wanting to eat more food and I don't have the same uh, palatability and saturation signals. And shut up. No, <laughs> just don't eat like an asshole. Eat clearly. Yeah. Like, notice your yeah. saturation signals and fucking don't eat like an asshole. 100%. And if you have pre existing, like if you already have high cholesterol, for example, yeah. a diet high in trans fats is going to be much worse for you than yes. an otherwise healthy individual. Like, exactly right. Take that into account. Be aware of you know what you should be doing. You are an adult. So. Yeah. Be aware of your health status and understand that if you are healthy or not. And if you <laughs> are listening to this and you have no idea if your cholesterol is high or not, probably go and get a blood yeah. test. Yeah. Very good idea. And then if you have no idea from that, also reach out to one of us. <laughs> yes. Yes. See. <laughs> um, eh, what's the next one? Fiber green supplement added to an already well planned diet. Good or bad? You know that meme where it's like the guy yeah, uh, with the water. watering the, with the water, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the BCA. It's, pr it's yeah. pretty much that, right? Like, yeah. yeah, like yeah, you do. Yeah, if you've got a well balanced diet or a well planned diet, I mean, okay, that's the difference, right? It says well planned and not well balanced. <laughs> yeah. So you could have a really good planned <laughs> diet, but it could be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one of those. Laid out well. Yeah, you've laid it out well. It's just really fucking bad in your selection of foods. Um, yeah. <laughs> could I mean, be the brother bad. Yeah, yeah, bad. One of those things. It's like if you. are Rather than saying well balanced or well balanced, if you are already meeting the requirements of any individual nutrient, you do not get bonus health benefits for going yes. past that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're already getting enough fiber, there is no benefit to a fiber it's supplement. Be, yeah. If you're I not mean, getting enough fiber, it could be an absolute game changer. So, yeah. yeah. I, I say this when I talk to people about uh, like off season stuff like that. People try to talk, like, try to do like five, 6,000 calories of brown rice and chicken, like, fuck off. Yeah. That, like, you don't get, uh, what, what, how do I explain it? more bonus points or bonus yeah. growth for suffering yeah. and making it harder. Yeah. At a certain point, it needs to be easier to consume the calories consistently. That's it. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. It's the same principle I actually try and teach with micronutrients. It's like once you've hit your yeah. micronutrient intake for the day, you don't get browning or bonus points for more. Yeah. If anything, sometimes more depending on the micro can be yeah, bad. It could be <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be, yeah, could be bad. Yeah, so 100%. Yeah, um, and and to most Pete, most Pete green Evans and the, the vitamin. Well, and to Pete Evans and his vitamin K. Oh. <laughs> 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 Let's get poisoned. 
No. Yeah. Um, was he? Was he the guy trying to get tell everybody to like give babies like yeah. unpasteurized milk? And yeah, shit? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, mate, every year you hear yeah. about like babies dying from it, and you're yeah. posting about it on Instagram. You, fucking yeah. Like, I mean, he's not the smartest human being. Nah, nah, he really went downhill real quick. Well, yeah, because yeah. yeah. then he tried to sell. He tried. He he patented and tried to sell his own COVID testers or COVID cures. <laughs> or something. If yeah. he got fined twelve thousand dollars per unit that he sold. Yeah, didn't he have like then he had that blue light, violet light, rainbow light thing oh, that was supposed to cure every possible known disease to man that's good so yeah 100 percent. i'll buy it what's your take on the manly jersey saga this week oh for fuck's sake oh, man. i think you can pitch out this is one of my clients isn't it uh yes <laughs> <laughs> no, I, had I had to check uh yes, yes. <laughs> yes. for fuck's sake look see i'm actually i'm actually not as mad at this one as, say, previous situations of rugby players being lippy. They have made a statement that it's about their beliefs, and so they're standing down to not endorse it. Okay, great. They aren't pushing it on anyone. They aren't saying, like, go screw yourself or anything. They aren't saying that they hate anyone. It's just simply, this is against our beliefs or the way we choose to believe it, so we don't want to do it. Everyone's respected that. Great. Move on. It just means that in the future that, you know, this is the precedent that's been set, so now we have to accept that. But the thing that it gets me is, like, and I was saying this through Brooklyn the other day, when we have discussions, right, and people that are, let's say, of the left leaning and they demand things like equity and equality and acceptance of conversation, like you have to hear our protest, you then don't get to dismiss someone else's right to protest. Like you have to be like if you're willing to if you're pushing to have yours heard, you then don't get to dismiss or deny the, oppos- the opposition chance to have theirs heard. And so that's why I push myself to be such a centrist in, in most things is that both sides have the right to say what they want to say. And they haven't done anything theoretically abusive, hate-filled or anything like that. Do I agree with it? I don't care, to be honest. Like, I don't care. It's not a jersey. I'm going to go buy, do it, whatever. Just make it less, like, forced. These guys just said, hey, look, not for us. I'm going to take a step back. You can bring in whoever you want. If it affects our contract, so be it. They've just said, all right, you're down for the week. We're not paying you. Fair enough. Sweet. There's no, like, fuck you guys because you didn't do this. And then them being like, hey, fuck you because you refused to wear this jersey. It's just like, eh, okay. I guess on the flip side to that, how does that fall with Israel Folau? See, that's different because Israel's had the intention of hate speech. He was yeah. genuinely speaking from hatred and a point of anger and disgust, whereas these yeah. ones are like, we don't want to Yeah, do I, I don't disagree with that either. I don't disagree. Yeah, he, 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 did, he, 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 he did make, yeah, he made some comments against it. But at the same time, it was also from a belief of religion. So, yeah, no, I get that. But like at the same time, look at the two contents of the situation. Yeah, of course. No, no, no of, course, says, of course. He said he quotes the Bible verse yeah. which, from his religion, yeah, or yeah. his version of the Bible that he yeah. endorsed. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. I know. They just I'm sort just... of said, look, not our thing. Yeah, not our yeah. thing. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a tough one. I think sometimes with this stuff, to follow on with what Ben was saying, it's like you either believe in democracy or you don't. And mm-hmm, yeah. the fundamental principle of democracy, right? Is yeah. like everybody gets a say. And yeah. The other example of this was, you know, in Melbourne, fuck, there's a lot of protests. Um, yeah. they, had, they had the Black Lives Matter protest, yeah. which, you know what, I'm all about it. Good. Yeah. And then they had the anti-vax protests. Was I about that? No. But yeah. at the same time, who gets to decide what you can and can't protest? Protest, yeah, yeah, right. You either respect people's right to do it or you don't. There's not yeah. really an in-between. Yeah. Um, and this is probably the same. Like, I don't think you should be able to force people to support a social agenda. Like. Whether or not you believe it's right or not. Like, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm right. for gay. I yeah. do think gay people should be able to get married, but I don't yeah. think everybody should have to wear a rainbow t shirt. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I I'm the exact. I think we're all in agreement in that. It's kind of like, hey, like it's a great, you know, um, initiative by the mm. club, by the NRL that they want to do that and promote it and help it. Like, that's great. It's awesome. Like, you know, awareness, sweet, of course. But you can't force a person yeah. to. No. Do like, something, right? Would, it's I, kind would of like I wear a rainbow t shirt if you told me? Sure. Like, I don't give a fuck. But like, yeah. I don't think it, yeah, needs to be. It's not the if same my, as like. If my hate job speech. came to me and said, hey, if my job, if my prior job said, hey, by the way, you're not getting paid unless you wear this, and also you have to endorse this, I'm like, hmm, but you don't get to say that. You don't like, yes, that's not in my contract. I haven't agreed to that. It goes beyond my required professional contractual agreement into yeah. something more politically specific. That's against, like, you know, that's not really how obligations work. Yeah. Um, and they're free to then say no, which they did. They will get deducted pay. Yeah. But it's not like the, the part that is acceptable to me, though I keep seeing people give them shit. Mm. The acceptable part to me is they are pushing that on, like, other people saying, hey, you know, F all of you, you're not allowed to do this. It's against yeah. ours to get married. They haven't said that. Well, I haven't seen that, so I don't care. Yeah. What they just said is, look, not for us. I'm stepping down. I'm not going to wear this. Okay, sweet. That's you. You just don't get paid. Yeah. yeah. 
it's yeah, pretty sure. I mean, do I think you're a little bit of a dickhead for like thinking gay people shouldn't be allowed to get married? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, of course, but we don't know that that's what they've said either, right? They've just simply said, hey, we just don't want to wear the yeah, jersey. Oh, we true, don't want to yeah. play the game, right? They could have, yeah, okay, look, they, they could be for any, any one of reasons that's personal to them. And if you know what, if that, and even if that was their decision, if they're like, no, I just don't agree with that, it's like, all right, well, each to their own, like you said. You know, yeah. democracy is democracy, right? You don't have to agree yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, one last question, and it's very, very uh, academic, I think. Ooh. So we're going to have to actually, you know, be semi smart on this one. If I can oh, yeah. kill it, well, we have a bad route. It's the end of the podcast, guys. Thanks for listening to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, take, yeah. can taking caffeine too early in the morning cause problems for adenosine? How much caffeine are we talking? I mean, there's no specific amount. <laughs> it's just can taking too much. So I guess a lot of caffeine. Oh, it says cake. Sorry, it says can taking caffeine too early. So it doesn't say an amount of caffeine. Yeah, I mean, this you guys with new receptors on that kind of shit. But like, what yeah. caffeine's an adenosine receptor antagonist, so it's gonna it yeah it's wakefulness by like what blocking the it blocking adenosine re- receptor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. blocks it, so it inhibits it. I, I, I think from memory, and again, this is one of the times where I think he's almost like, I don't mind him with Huberman was talking about this aspect of neurochemistry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 99% of the time, the second he steps outside, that's like, bro, shut up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he was, one of his protocols was like delay caffeine consumption by at least an hour post wake up to maintain circadian rhythm and get like sun exposure. Yeah. The yep. accuracy of that, I wasn't 100% certain on, but given that he's had prior exp- uh, conversations that are full of shit, um, I was like, that, that kind of makes sense when you look at trying to regulate circadian cycles. Yeah, the only problem is chronic caffeine intake will still mm-hmm. have an effect on inhibition yeah. of adenosine re- receptors, which that's the that's the like the caveat, right? So it's like, yeah, while we know that it does inhibit it, and like you said, probably delaying caffeine intake in the morning, especially from a circadian rhythm standpoint, probably makes logical sense. Mm-hmm. If you're consuming caffeine on the regular, which I guess we all are, right? Yeah. Um, depending on, I think the dose as well. I haven't looked yeah. at the research. Yeah, I haven't looked at the research as to how much would then tip you over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it does inhibit the receptor either way. So it's just like you're fucked yeah. either way. Definitely. I think <laughs> the other thing which would add even another layer of nuance to it, there's going to be a very individual response. Response, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Like myself, I can tolerate quite a substantial amount of caffeine and not really feel any negative side. Yes. Um, whereas not everybody's the same with that. So, yeah, you know, playing around with that and even within that, like we don't really know, I mean, correct, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of like what specific neurons caffeine actually works on, like we know been. enough, it's like, we know yeah. enough to know that this is basically how it works, but I don't think it's really been. It hasn't, explored. Yeah. It hasn't been identified yet from what I understand, which neurotransmitters it. um, yeah. effects with specific transmitters they've got an idea of the receptors they just haven't got a, um, any idea of the actual transmitters themselves which ones actually do what when it comes to caffeine so yeah. and i think it's like sometimes you know you go back to like what we really do know what could be like actionable for people yes caffeine can be a useful tool um if you are relying on shitloads of it probably address some other factors of your life yeah. <laughs> um and you are if you are experiencing some potential negative side effects of like sleeplessness and things like that, Maybe obviously, cut down. yeah, revisit <laughs> your timing of it, your overall yes. dosage, and yeah. just troubleshoot from there. I always find it ironic when people like they use caffeine to compensate for a poor sleep cycle and feeling restless. They'll take caffeine across the entire day, leading to them feeling tired and restless, and not sorry, leading to them not sleeping, cascading a spiral effect of lack of sleep and feeling restless. And it's like, well, yeah, let's let's reduce some of these things and keep you awake. Yeah, it's yeah. fun to watch though. Hundred percent. I think there's like some good <laughs> general rules, like that I try and set for people. Like for me personally, I'll never have caffeine after three. Yeah. With some clients, I'll be like, just don't have it after midday. Like, yeah. Yeah. and I'm you might feel tired for a few days. That's okay. Yeah. But maybe in a few days' time, you'll actually go to bed and fall asleep, and then wake up the next day and be yeah. like, ah. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. I actually like obviously working the way we used to work, Max, in our in our jobs previously. You know, and even you now, I guess more so having coffee all day every day like double shots you know at least four or five times a day coming away from that like i'll literally only have caffeine now like in the morning i'd very mm-hmm. rarely have a past midday and it's not from just a it's like a one thing it's just how it sort of plays out like i'll have yeah. a double shot when you know after i get up have a shower do what i got to do and then i might have a double shot before training 
depending on how I'm feeling, right? And yeah. It's like, well, that's usually before 12 because I like to train early because training after 12 is just death. So, you know, it's just funny how that's played out, but how much it's actually played on on sleep and stuff. It's making life a lot easier to, mm. to chill and sleep. And I've, you know, I've it wasn't, that. yeah, uh, it wasn't intentional either. It was just purely how the day laid out. Mm. I was noticing that when the, the biggest problem I had was like, we're training as Tom was like pushing his days back and we're getting to the gym at like seven o'clock at night, seven 30. I'm having like pre workout. It was getting like, and cause like we were in heavy phases of training. So I was like, fuck, I need to be switched on. Um, and then you're trying to get to bed at like midnight. And then it was like the way I was waking up the next day, it could be scattered all over the shop, whether it was like 7 a.m., 6 a.m., 8 a.m. It was like just all over. But having moved to a starting time, I found starting in the mornings like up at five to train at six, that regulation of time means I'm up at the same time. I'm not having caffeine that late anywhere beyond like five o'clock. And I, I still get like, I sleep like a fucking rock, but like might be five o'clock or so they'll have coffee, um, get more work done in the nighttime and then yeah, pass out. But that wake up without extra caffeine the night before, fuck like the difference in my sleep quality. I yeah. just wake up drooling. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Definitely. Well, that's it for questions from my end, children. That's all Beautiful. I got. Um, got this and, yeah. As always. Max, anything that we need to know that you're releasing? I know you're doing a little collaboration piece there with STC boys that we've had on many a time. Yeah, Sometimes just talking. randomly when they're not supposed to be on and they just yeah. rock up, but it's fine. Okay. You, can't, <laughs> you can't be trusted. No. Um, no, we're, yeah, no, we're doing the, the bigger, stronger, faster series. So basically the idea here is... Take steroids. Yeah, essentially. Um, yeah. Days all the way. No, so what we're talking about is, and it's gaining a little bit of traction now on the, on the socials, this idea of like, concurrent training, um, which is obviously our wheel out, wheelhouse of strength and conditioning. So we're talking about like how you can best combine the strength practice practices of, you know, your traditional strength sports, mm -hmm. your hypertrophy from bodybuilding, um, and then also your speed and power development from your tr traditional strength and conditioning. So the true you, hybrid model. Yeah. Ooh. And it's like, yeah, because I feel like fuck, people talk about this stuff on social media and it's yeah, abundantly it's, clear they don't yeah, know what the fuck Yeah, it's going about. around, isn't it? The whole yeah. concurrent yeah. training and thing again. Like, it's like, fuck, uh, I swear this was five, ten years ago this happened, but anyway. Yeah, yeah sure. and I was like, fuck, okay, we, we've got to do something about this. Uh, so we're doing that on the 12th of August um, mm -hmm. at our place in Melbourne, Performance Hub. So that'll be spammed all over your socials. If you follow myself, Carl, Ben, Jazz, anybody, you will get spammed. So yeah. jump yes. in. Mine might come down and annoy people there we'll see yeah do it yeah just, just throw out random questions 100%. in the q and a is just be a dick <laughs> <laughs> what trench should i take i have a question for Carl. This, this, this is an icarus off netflix yeah pretty much well you know it's the old documentary bigger stronger faster yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. why yeah that's what 100%. i was getting at yeah that's what i was getting at 100%. That's all of australia is taking steroids yes uh, strength sport and performance Steroids. Benny, you got anything that we need to know coming out? Um, happening? Mm, mm, what do we got? Uh, yes, there is a sleep seminar coming up at the end of the end of no, start of August. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, next week. Next next, next weekend. weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, so yeah, we're going through. <clears throat> it's a know, probably like a half hour of actual content and like a half hour of over chat. Now, I'm not saying that I am the neuroscience expert on sleep, but I guarantee that I know a lot more than a lot of people. So um, we'll be diving into uh, a lot more of the sleep science around training, performance, health, um, nutrition, how it all impacts and affects things. So obviously going off people's sleep scores that they did from our sleep quiz, uh, we'll try and encourage people to bring that. Um, and you'll be doing that to just kind of open that conversation a bit more and get people really emphasize on sleep. Um, and then from that, we we'll just expand the course more. Uh, got you the beta slides for the hypertrophy modules yeah. and programming modules. So they are nice and impactful, nice in depth, but simple. Um, and yeah, so running clients, clients are still open. I'll probably keep taking onboarding clients to like, you know, four weeks out or I'm just going to be a miserable death plane of existence and probably not going to be beneficial to anyone for a little while. So the usual, the usual, um, we, we, we decided against, South Australia, when we looked at it, it turns out the weekend of the comp is also a public holiday and flights jumped up like 300%. Yeah. Yeah, so it nice. went like, it was going to cost like $800 return to go to Adelaide. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I don't know bad. Adelaide, but even I know I don't want to spend $800 return to go to Adelaide. No, no you definitely don't. No. That's before, that's before no. you get like TANS registration, yeah. comp oh, And there's not that much going on in Adelaide, bro, to, yeah. to, to um, warrant that. That's so for sure. like, Sorry for anyone playing. from Adelaide. <laughs> 
We'll plan we'll plan a peak week trial uh, at the same date, so we still be ready at the same time. But yes. worst case scenario, we've got an extra two weeks and ready for Queensland, which will be the fifteenth, and then nationals on the 29th. So we're beyond the halfway point of prep now, which is good. So it means like well, it's exciting. There's let, more time has gone than is left from when we started. Got it. Very good. Sounds like fun. I haven't yeah, got anything going on as per usual. So. And you have two spots left in your online coaching intake. I've actually got I've got one now. Someone's yeah, taking the other one. So yeah, I just I just haven't promoted it on Instagram. So sorry about that, guys. Urgency, I, urgency. To be honest, I haven't put anything on Instagram for fucking ages. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> there wasn't even any fucking there wasn't even like influencer shots of you being in Dubai. I had this yeah, yeah 100%. I don't want to be that guy. I've got photos. I just don't want to be that guy that's just like, oh, look at me. Coconut water, shot next to the pool, Dubai. And then, I mean, I, 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 to, to be honest, I went to the pool once the whole time I was there. Yeah, just take 50 photos. Don't yeah, <laughs> all different angles. <laughs> yeah, that's a year's worth of content. <laughs> yeah, isn't that how you do it? You do, one, yeah, so sort of you do, you do the one photo shoot and then you recycle the photos for fucking 12 months. 100%. Uh, I can have the shot reposted. Yeah, 100%. Nah. Definitely. Link in was, bio for my seven-figure coaching blueprint. I mean, uh, it was good. I got to play <laughs> golf. I got to do a little bit of gym training in the hotel gym, which was actually not too bad, to be honest. It was, you know, you know, sometimes you come across, like, you know, you come across those hotels and you're like, oh, like this is actually pretty good. It's actually yeah. got what you need just to, yeah, yeah, it was good. Got a couple of good little pumps in the gym, which was nice. Um, the most exciting part was the flight there and back because you got fucking, you're in top, top class. Business, business, fucking class, business class. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, business. Was it Air Emirates? Yeah. Oh, bro. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, she had to drag me out of this. I, will, I live I- here now. <laughs> Business has been good. I can't really complain. That's why I don't really promote much. <laughs> Just like I've got clients, I'm good. I've got a, I've got a gym that's up and running, and an online business that's going okay. So we're good. Life's good. Okay. But I mean, I will be moving back to actual online and content by the end of August when I step away from my actual gym, which would be nice. Well, I'll be working a lot less, so guys will and girls will have to be ready for me to be spamming their Instagram soon Love with it. educational content again. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Just saying. I've got no idea. So if anyone's got any ideas they want to say, no. just let me know. DMP. Oh, DMP I can do. DMP is fun. Anyway, we won't get into that. <laughs> That's it from us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in as always. And you, you know guys. the drill. When we have questions, we ask Ben. <laughs> Actually, you can ask any of the Ben's. Ask Ben Scott because he'll just jump on randomly anyway. Yeah, we'll just bring him on randomly. Yeah, we'll just bring him on randomly. Thank you to Maxibon for jumping on. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, overdue, that's for sure. Yeah, for um, sure. episode. <laughs> and as always, thank you to you guys for listening. Goodbye. See you guys. <laughs>